Hey, I got just got this hack and so brilliant MTD. Um, here's the HUD styling. And it has a 18 horsepower post twin. I think somebody did an engine swap because it's a 1993 twin IR. I think this is an 80s tractor. Got big tires that apparently, according to the seller, are only about a year old. Pretty firm tires, apparently. And um, they are. Oh, are they fairly firm, but I think I might do bigger tires on the front. I don't know, those are actually pretty close to the edge there. But they don't seem to have any cracking on them. Nice tires, and they're big tires too, especially on the back. It's got a. There's the front seat, and it's got. Don't crank. I think so. He's been messing with the wiring. It's got a. Here's high range, neutral, low range. Reverse. It's essentially, it's a two speed tranny, I think. And then it's got seven speed variable poly type setup. Throttle does not work good. Doesn't really work at all. But battery says it's 2017 it looks like supply the battery and then you go doesn't seem I can't tell for sure if it is the same won't really crank um, if I jump the solenoid it sparks a little but it doesn't solenoid doesn't pull in it's new solenoid evidently but and the belt is coming off one of the pulleys down there I'm first just going to try to get the engine to fire up. I think it needs a new starter. I'm going to try jump starting it with a powerful battery and see if I can get it to crank over. I don't know if the carb's plugged up though. If I can get it to crank, I might get it to start. So let's find out. Oh, and last night I did try to jump start. I got it to turn, but it would just turn and then stop on each compression stroke. So I think I need, like, need a powerful little battery. So someone's been messing with the wiring. I'm going to try to scramble. Touch that one over there. Jump start with that track. It just flooded. Can never get it to start. But maybe I can still get this track started. So I'm gonna try to jump it. First just try to get it to see if it'll crank. If it'll crank, then I'll probably try to choke it. See if it'll fire. At least get it started, that'd be good. Take off the shrouds and get that engine started. I'm pretty so saying how hot the wires get. That starter itself is bad, probably. I just realized I forgot to push down that clutch. And one of the belts is coming off the pulley. I need to work on that. That might have been why it wouldn't start. I don't even bother to put the screws back into the side though because. Who knows if this will get it started or not. But let's try that again. Let's see if we can get the crank over. Right when we change that starter. I need to look at that pulley underneath.
try on and choke it. Now now you're cranking all the way. Yeah, man, it's done all the way. See if I can't get this thing started. a little bit of extra power. and running on that other tractor so you still wouldn't crank over completely it only has to crank completely that once definitely a bad starter pretty confident of that could be weak wiring but I can't doubt it it's, it's me could try replacing that cable I'm gonna go ahead and take this off cover off don't feel like it turns Real especially hard. Got a lot of compression. Feels like, but you know, take bolts out around the engine. Bolts around the shroud. All right, got the shrouds pulled off. Take a look underneath here. Now the starter. Um, it don't have much play in it. I don't feel like wiggle there. The plastic doesn't look that old. It still don't seem to be worn down much. I kind of think I might, um, maybe it needs its brushes clean. So I'm gonna pull that starter out and take a look at it. Okay, so if you're gonna take the starter out on one of these, oh. See the cap down there for the horse and all staff steps sticking out right there. It's pretty cool. Feels like it's got good compression. I think this thing will run good. Quite likely. It's got a nice round muffler down there that supposedly. Oh. I remember a guy, a friend of mine, told me those sound cool. Curious to hear it. No, so that's cut right there. It looks kind of like what you do if you buy those extended length starters that have more power for these close twins. So if I get one of those for it, I don't have to cut it. I don't know why somebody cut that though. But I do know I'll probably be getting one of those starters for it eventually. If I can at least get this starter to work. Good enough to see if that will even start. I kind of have a feeling it will if I can get that starter to crank it. But crank it. Now, so they've got a spring wound around right there. Some extra, I think it's to help with that coving. Uh, Supposedly this thing has new plugs in it. Well, 
They said they had replaced the spark plug last season. I guess they mean last summer. Yeah. Now we're to the starter. Looks fairly clean inside, honestly. I kind of think somebody may have bought this replacement engine. Alright. I don't know if they bought it new. Possible. Got a leak down there. A little leakage. Don't look like terrible little leakage, but there is some um, leakage. Alright, now. I'm gonna pull that starter off. You're gonna take out these two bolts here. Alright, so first. That. No, oh, not there. They ought to be 7 16th, and it's hard to get to anyway, so I'll start with these two. Just gonna take this one out, and there's one under the flywheel you gotta get out. You don't have to take the flywheel off to get them out, usually. As far as I know, I haven't had to take it off on any. I think I may have heard the earlier posts when you have to take the flywheel off to get to it. The other bolt, you can't just take your hand and loosen. them. It's just annoying. It's under there. Um, well, there you go. So you're gonna take this bolt out. Oh. Storage bolts loosened. Alternator bolts down there. Oh, the alternators down there. Don't know if I ever told you. Um, so this thing is a so it's like a two-speed transmission, low range, reverse, high range. So it is a neutral here, and then it's got a variable pulley, kind of like a constantly variable transmission, that type of thing. And then um, this goes back, slow it down, and this goes sort of speed up apparently. I don't think that's working properly because I can see one of the belts is falling off down there or coming off. Have to mess around with all that super thick belts and stuff. Yes. So, now I don't know quite how to get this starter wiggled out with this piece of metal here. Hope I don't have to take much of it apart. Might have to loosen up that battery. Try. See how I can wiggle starter out. I think I can wiggle that out enough. I don't even feel that one, honestly. It's been one of how many hours on this engine, and I think I probably need to take it out and clean the brushes. Take it and clean the brushes. See if that'll fix it. Got another post twin starter. I took off of that, bought a new one. I saw one down there. Still works. Not good. Let's try powering up this starter. Let's see how it acts. It's a weak starter, I think. Let's see here. So. Let's see if I pose it on this. Let's see if we can get some action out of this thing. I think it'll come on, I just don't know. Okay. Well, sounds like it probably has bad bearings. <laughs> Let me use lubricator. Squealy starter, isn't it? <laughs> Let's go lubricate it and put in, clean the commentator and stuff. That might bring it back to life, honestly. At least enough to get this thing cranked up and running. So I get running, I need to fix that drive belt. Probably needs carb cleaned, maybe even need it replaced. Just try it. Get it cranked, maybe it'll start then. Alright, so I'm gonna take these two bolts out on the back. One through there and there. Then we'll see what sort of shape it's in. Can't tell if that gear is gonna break soon. A line across it, so I know about how it's supposed to line up. There we go. Uh, take these two bolts out. Let's see. Just 
duty. Oh my, I need to know how these things come apart. Look, oh, there's something about the bus holders you got to. Oh, there they all popped in. Yeah, I'll need to clip those buses back. It's like they're long enough. They got C's on all of them. I don't know what that C means, but I don't think they're too short. Down it. They still got a C on them. So yeah, definitely could use cleaning. Okay, let's get this pulled out. Hold on. Strong then. Alright, so I'm gonna start by sanding that down and then I'll glue both of these bearings. Try to get them to turn okay. Okay, got that commutator all sanded up with that. And now I need to lubricate it. First of all, I say, I think I use. Um, let's see. I think I used some pins to hold those in last time. Easy. What are they called? Oh, pa not pins, paper clips, that's their name. Just trying to remember. Two. I need two more. No, I honestly might still have some. Yeah, I want to dig it out. Got box old stars here. There. Some old stars. Grab a few more paper clips. And then we'll put this starter back together. Let it run. Then we'll start this motor up. Hope it'll crank it anyway. Cranks it good. So I really do think I can get this engine running. It feels like it's got a really good capacitor. Not like it's been ran too hard. Of course, it has got the some kind of compression at least on it. All right, let's see. So I think we bend one of these straight. That. And then I think I just in the past would have pushed a bus back. It's holding. I think it just goes push it back into there. Hmm. Let's see if I can get it into the holder. There I go. And now it's got to go far enough back. You see that little slot there. I think that's gonna go back into there. Yeah, yeah. There we go, something like that, you see. That's not like the only bus back. Then when I let it go, the bus is no longer really held back. Pulls back out. So I got loop bailings first and be ready to put it back together when I do that. So let's see, front bearing. Try to get some oil down in there, I guess, without getting it on the one. Let's try to get some metal washer in there, you see, and crying back. It's got a little spring washer behind it. You want to buy that metal one back and then put the oil back in there. Kept, so I just kept taking my knife, prying that back, trying to get oil in there without really getting any on the arm. It's so I figured a little bit at the front's okay, but you need to try to avoid it. I don't think I'll try to put any in the outside. I think, boy, I've gotten enough in there that'll work. Now the back is a lot easier to lube, and you'll lube that after you put everything else back together. So, let's see. Where did I put that line right there? There's that line I marked. And here's the other. There's only two ways it can go together, just about. You gotta make sure that slots, the slots are at the back, though. Or else, I mean, it can go together like that, but that would not be right, and it wouldn't really go together there. Got a lot of hard magnetic pressure, so just so you know, once you get that brush holder area empty there, um, you might still think you've got something holding it, but you just gotta pull hard, hard, because there's such strong magnets trying to hold it in, and the magnets will pull it in too, um, if you can get it in there now. <laughs> they're strong magnets. Okay, get that close enough lined up. There we go. Okay. Get close lined up, it'll go together once you put the bolts in. Now I got to do this. So, this part, um, let me get the tripod. This could be valuable info for anybody watching. Alright, so let's see. This is attempt number one. I don't quite even know how to do this. So, I think, let's see. This 
side out. So let me pry all these straight first. Tap number one at getting the glasses in and putting them back together the starter. Let's see. Hopefully this will be the only attempt. It will be successful. Okay, so I'm going to push these brushes in there. Try to get this in this little slot here. I'll be the focus of that slot. Then you might not keep holding the paper flaps. I figured out a better way to do it, but I don't know what it was. There's a better way to do this. U-G-I-H-I-I-I-I. Not easy. Oh. Brush this back into their springs. Speed it back. Three are in there now. I'm not sure I can do this this way. Now I'm assistant. Let's see how I can get this back far enough. There we go. Now let's see if we can do it without. Put this hand without letting it fly out. Let's see if we can do it Now let's see. So, oh man. If you can afford it, it's not even worth trying to repair the old starter. Just buy your ah, a new one. That ain't gonna work. I don't know what I did last time, and I don't think it could have been that. That ain't gonna work. Hmm. Well, uh, let me see. I think I have an idea. Maybe I can bend them. Um, did that so that they're just going in and holding two of them. Now I got to do that the same for the other two brushes. That's a work.
horses back. holding each other in squeezing the brushes out of the way hopefully you saw how to do that you need to know um, let's see so now I'm gonna make sure you can see me put it in this is the easy part let's really squeeze that slide beside the commentator there we go and now ta-da all the brushes have popped back in place. And now the other end is a lot easier to lube. Easy. Do, 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 do. Only put in a few drops though because I don't want to fill this, get the commentator wet. Pour some of that back down. back outside so I just have to line the bearings feels like it turns better Start. don't feel like it's got all the way honestly connect these wires up this is just a power supply jump starter and battery charger thing 
So let's see, it's going to turn that way, so I want to jump the other way. Okay, so let me put this clip on this side. I want to brace it against. Huh? Plug it in this thing and see if it works. So it's a pretty weak starter, you can tell. But it's better than it was. The new ones you can buy. This post twin legs I repaint it. Needs a new carburetor possibly. It doesn't run that that great. It runs pretty good. That carburetor is like nine years older than the ends, I guess. Not nine, but seven. Got a nice shiny new starter that I bought for it. That one's longer than the old one. For some reason somebody has cut this round like they had meant for the longer starter to be installed on this aftermarket one. I don't know. But I'll put the old one back on now. Because it does turn. Hopefully that plastic gear won't break. And if it does, if the starter seems strong enough, I'll just replace the gear if I can. Okay, yeah, I'll, let's see. First, you do it. You connect to this. You have to have to sand these connects, that connection. It's not real good. Grab some sandpaper. Alright, so I polished up those a little bit and uh, start there for the wire connection. Let's see, I forgot to check. Is this fairly clean? Yep. Alright, got the starter bolted back on. And I guess I'll go ahead and try. I can get again without putting the shrouds back on. Don't want to run it for long. If it does start, don't want to run it for long with the shrouds off. In fact, if it cranks, I'll probably go ahead and put the shrouds back on. Notice you see that connector right there. It's been taped. I'm pretty sure somebody did a swap. This is not the original engine. Though I think it would have been a post twin Briggs originally. Let's get a good view right here. See how it cranks now. Don't know if this battery on it's any good. Honestly, don't sound like that bad. Except that it just isn't strong enough. Starter sound like it would be a pretty good starter if it had more voltage. Try, try borrowing a battery out of another chain. I suppose that battery certainly isn't charged. Let's see. that battery. Bolt in another battery for now. Crank's good enough I think. So I guess I'll try putting the shrouds back on and see if it'll start. <laughs> 